A question that I hear a lot, unfortunately, from people in my audience and people who've been working on building their businesses for a while, but who haven't gotten the results that they want is, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing all this work in my business, like setting up my website, setting up my systems, but I'm still not getting clients. What am I missing? So today we are going to bust through a lot of the common misconceptions and myths about what you need to be doing, especially when you're first starting out and building your own online coaching or consulting business to replace your nine to five income. And we're going to do that by talking through the metrics that you need to be tracking so that you can identify, use those to identify what it is that you should be working on. I'm a former engineer, so you're in good hands. We're all about the numbers and measuring and tracking to make sure that you're spending your time in the most efficient and effective way to get actual results in your business. Let's get started. The first metric that you always want to be measuring in your business is new leads that are coming in. Now, when I say new leads, we don't need to get super technical with how do you define a lead in terms of is it an email subscriber? Is it someone who's a follower on my Instagram account? It depends on It depends honestly on the business that you're building and where your audience is. But for now, let's say that leads can include how many new email subscribers you are adding and the number of people who are joining your Facebook community if you have one. I wouldn't include so much your follower count, for example, on Instagram or on Twitter because those are not as effective in terms of measuring people who are actually engaged and interested. It's very easy to follow someone on Twitter or Instagram, it takes a bit more commitment to sign up for your email list or to find you and join your Facebook community. So that's what I would say for now to define as how you define your leads. So here's the thing about tracking your leads. You want to be looking at that number every single day, every single week, and every single month. How many new leads did I add yesterday? How many new leads did I add to my audience last week? How many new leads did I add to my audience last month? That is going to give you a very high level benchmark of where the health of your business is. And the thing is, it's also a benchmark that you can control because you can't necessarily control when someone is going to buy from you, but you bet that you can control how quickly you are growing your audience. If you're not growing it at all, then it makes sense that you're not getting people who are interested in what it is that you're doing. So when you know that's the metric you need to be tracking, that allows you to step back and identify, okay, if that's the metric that I need to be tracking and I'm not growing my leads, what do I need to do to grow my leads? That's when it comes down to tracking the activities that you're then doing to be able to grow that number. That comes down to all of the different activities that you can do to find your audience where they are hanging out and drive them back to you to increase their awareness of you and your business. This does not include you posting on your website or on your Facebook page if you don't have a big audience right now because if you have no audience and you're posting this amazing content to where no one can see it, that's not going to grow your leads. Instead, it's about finding your audience where they are, whether that's listening to a certain podcast, whether that's uh, reading a certain publication, whether that's in another Facebook community or any, anywhere else, wherever they are. Then what you need to be doing is creating content for that audience where they are reading it. So if they're listening to a podcast, you need to be reaching out to the podcast host and saying, hey, I would love to do an interview with you on your podcast where I can share this, this, and this that your audience is going to find super helpful. That's going to put you in front of that podcast audience and you're going to in return share amazing, valuable content that they love, which is going to also get them interested in you and have them going back to find you, whether that's joining your email list or your Facebook community or any sort of community and thus driving your leads. It's the same thing when it comes to uh, finding publications that your audience is reading. You want to be talking to those editors, those publications and saying, hey, 
I've got some great content I would love to create for you. And this is what I'm thinking. This is my experience. This is why I'm qualified to talk about it. And this is why your audience is going to get amazing value out of this. In return, they're going to say yes. You're going to create amazing content for them. And again, that's going to put you in front of that audience and drive that audience back to where it is that you are hosting your own audience and add them to your community. The final piece, as I mentioned, is to find your audience in online groups where they are hanging out. And what that comes down to is getting a little bit resourceful. Maybe finding some people who are your ideal clients and tracking, hmm, where are they? What Facebook groups are they in? What other forums are they in? Or maybe even asking them. And then doing the same thing by going to those communities, those forums, and sharing your content as well with the hosts of those communities and forums or directly in those groups so that, again, you're getting in front of your audience, you're sharing amazing content, and you are driving them back ultimately to you. And that's how you're building your audience. So when it comes down to tracking leads, you can say, okay, I did this podcast. It drove this many leads. It was awesome. I did this guest post. It didn't drive as many leads. So I'll know not to create more content for that publication in the future. I posted in this group or this community and it drove this many leads and that's a good source of leads for me. And so ultimately what that allows you to do is identify the key activities that you need to continue doing and repeating to consistently drive leads to your community. That's how you track the very first metric because without leads, you have no audience. You, you're you not going to have any new interest in your business. And it doesn't matter how beautiful your website is or how perfect your systems or your funnels or any of that is. It's simply going to be a waste of your amazing content and time because no one will be seeing it. So that's the first metric that you need to be measuring. The second metric that you need to measure is sales inquiries. So if you are starting out as a coach or a consultant, most likely this is going to be in the form of sales calls where people schedule some time with you because they're interested in learning about how you can help them further. And then you get on a call to talk them through, Hey, what are you struggling with? What can I help you with? And this is how I can help you with that in this way of working together. And how you want to track that is you, again, same thing with leads, you want to measure how many sales inquiries, sales calls did I get yesterday? Did I get last week? Did I get last month? And how does that relate to the number of leads that I got? So that you can see it is somewhat dependent on the leads that you're getting. If you are not getting any new leads, it's not surprising that you wouldn't be getting any new sales inquiries because you've got no new people learning about you. So there's no one to be interested anew in what it is that you have to share. However, if you're driving 10 leads, maybe one of them should be interested at least and at least chatting with you to see if you can help them. If you're driving a hundred, then you should definitely be getting at least a handful of people who are interested in what it is that you are doing. And that's how you want to measure. It's relative. You want to measure the absolute number of sales inquiries, the sales calls, but it's actually relative to the number of leads that you're driving in. Now, a good benchmark is to set at least that for every 100 people that come in, aim to have two be scheduling a call with you. This range can vary. On the higher end, you may be looking at 5% of your leads scheduling a call with you pretty quickly after finding you. But let's say 2% just to be super safe and conservative. What that tells you is if you are driving in 100 new leads and no one is interested in scheduling a call with you, there's something going on in the term, in the way that you are sharing your content, in the way that you are describing how you can help someone, in the way that you are inviting someone to schedule a call with you. And because of that, then it's not so much about you need to drive more leads. 
It's so it's more about what do I need to be sharing more of so that people know what I can help them with and they're excited and want to learn more about how they can work with me. So once you are tracking these two metrics, you can see how it basically gives you a cheat sheet through the numbers to figure out what's not working in your business. So to recap, you want to be tracking your sales inquiries, your sales calls, most likely if you're starting out as a coach or a consultant and you are aiming for at least two sales calls, two to five, but at least two for every 100 people that you have coming in anew to your audience. If you are not getting that, you want to be thinking about a few things. First is the audience that I'm driving through my leads, the right audience. For example, if you are a health coach and you're bringing in 100 new leads of people who love the way they look, feel super confident about the, their, their fitness, their health, their looks, all of that, they're not your ideal client. So if you, even if you have 100 or 1,000 of those people, they're not going to be people who are interested in what it is that you have to offer. So first you have to ask yourself, am I driving in the right type of audience? If that is a yes, then you want to be thinking through, okay, if I am doing that, then what is it about what I'm sharing? Is my offer for the way I'm describing how I help them not interesting enough to them that they want it or they're interested in learning more about it? Or am I not sharing enough for them to trust that I am the person to be able to help them? Am I not sharing, showcasing my expertise enough? Am I not showcasing that I can help them enough that I've been where they are, where I've helped people where they are as well? And at the end of this video, I will share another uh, tutorial I have that helps you create the four types of content that you absolutely need to be sharing with your audience to convert those leads into sales inquiries and sales. So don't worry, I've got you covered. Look out for that at the end of this video. So that is the second metric that you need to be tracking. The third and final metric that you want to be tracking is, of course, sales. So this is, it might feel like a no-brainer, but here is the reasoning behind it. Of course, you want to be tracking how many sales did I make yesterday? How many sales did I make the previous week? How many sales did I make in the last month? When you are starting out, this number might be super low. When I was first starting out in my first few online businesses, when I was doing Microsoft Excel coaching, career coaching, digital advertising consulting, there would be weeks where I wouldn't make a single sale. So I want you to know that's okay. That's normal when you're starting out. However, again, remember, you're tracking the absolute number, but you also want to track it relative to what it is that you are driving for the number of sales inquiries and sales calls. If you're not driving any sales calls, it makes sense that you're not going to be driving any sales. However, if you are driving a good number of sales inquiries, and what I usually see is a healthy benchmark, is you want to be converting anywhere from one to six to one out of 10 people that you have a sales call with when you're starting out. This number will increase as you become more established in your business, as you get better at identifying who your audience is, speaking to them at your sales process, you have more testimonials, all of that. So this is just a starting benchmark for you. However, with that, that lets you know, okay, if I've spoken to 20 people and not a single person has been interested, or even if I've spoken to maybe 15 or 11 and not a single person has even been remotely interested, something is off. If you aren't even driving that many sales calls, then it makes sense that you're not getting sales. And so then you would revisit what we talked about for the sales call metric and how to troubleshoot and optimize what's going on there. So if let's say you're getting the sales inquiries, but you're not getting the sales, then what it comes down to is you need to think through, all right, am I driving the right type of people onto my sales calls? So these are people who are interested in getting help. They're not just looking for freebies. They are interested in, in investing. They trust me at least enough to explore through how I might be able to help them. And what this comes down to is, of course, ultimately you have to be driving the right type of leads like we talked about earlier, but your content also has to be priming your audience to be excited to work with you and, and to invest with you. Your content has to be teaching your audience the value of investing with you so that when they schedule that sales call with you, they're already prepared and excited and they know what amazing value they'll get if it's a good fit and they want to continue working with you. And so that's what you want to be thinking through. And you also want to be thinking on the sales call itself. 
Am I talking through what I need to talk through? Am I sharing, hey, what are you struggling with? Am I really listening? Am I sharing how I'm gonna be able to help them versus saying, hey, here's my package, you should buy it. Are you have, having them understand how you can help them and how that's going to transform the problem that they want solved? So that comes down to if you're having the right people on your sales calls, they're primed, they're excited, then it becomes about identifying, okay, what's going on with my sales process that I need to work through? So those are the three main metrics that you want to be tracking. As you grow your business, it's not, it's going to become way less manual. You're going to be able to take the things that you're testing with that we talked through right now. Once you realize what's working and what's not, then you're going to be able to systematize it. You're going to be able to systematize how you drive leads to your business, maybe through established partnerships, maybe through advertising, maybe through established content platforms, lots of different ways to systematize that so you're not having to manually do it. Same thing for driving sales inquiries. You're gonna be able to take everything you learned through measuring like we just talked about and turn that into emails and automated content that drives someone from joining your audience to booking a sales call with you. And then eventually, if you want, you can also even outsource these sales calls themselves. You can hire someone to help you do that. So there are lots of different ways for you to be able to continue scaling your business and not have to be doing every single thing manually. But when you're starting out, these are the things that you personally want to be focusing on and that you want to be measuring and optimizing the way that we talked through so that you can get results and get the data that you need to be able to continue to grow your business that way. So those are the three metrics you want to be measuring. We also talked through how to measure them, what the right benchmarks are, what you need to be doing if you're not hitting those benchmarks. So I got you covered with all of that. As I mentioned earlier, now that you know what benchmarks to be tracking and what metrics you need to be measuring, maybe you want to know what content do I create to bring in new leads, to convert leads into customers, all of that amazing stuff, and which is why I've got another video for you on the four types of content that you absolutely need to be creating in your business to do that. So make sure you check out that awesome tutorial over here. I also have for you an awesome PDF on the steps it takes to build a successful six-figure online coaching or consulting business that allows you to break free from your nine to five and replace and exceed your salary. Make sure you check that out as well so that you can understand the high-level strategy of where you're going now that you know the benchmarks that you need to measure and optimize to. That PDF is over here, so again, make sure that you check that out. So that is it for today. If you found this helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified when I release a new video like this on building your own online coaching, consulting, and course business every single week. And I will see you next time.